So hey guys, this is the Mi 11 Ultra. This is the retail unit that I bought with my own money from the Mi app and it's finally arrived. So unlike other reviews that you've seen where those were review units which the tech reviewers had, yes, I'm a tech reviewer, but I purchased this with my own money and it's finally here. So it comes in this protective film on top. So I'm just gonna slide it out, get rid of that. So I haven't opened it, as you can see, the seal is still intact. So let's see what's on the body. So Mi 11 Ultra, and it's a big box. So yes, it's shipping with the 55 watt charger. And here is what's written on top here. So we have the camera specs, the dual AMOLED display, the front and the back, Qualcomm Snapdragon 888 5G processor, and we have this info here which says that it does support 67 watt charging but only 55 watt charger is included in the box and uh, as we speak I think on 12th of July the 67 watt charger is going to go on sale in India so if you want the ultimate fast charging you can get that and I was more interested to get that wireless charger the 80 watt wireless charger which was given for free I think it was only sold in China so yeah, bad luck, we're not going to get it in India. So here we go. So this is going to be an unboxing. It's not a review by any means. So let's start. Can't believe how much we guys had to wait to get our hands on this. I mean, I've always used an iPhone and Samsung flagships, but yeah, this is my first Xiaomi device and mainly I'm interested because of camera amongst other things, of course. Okay, so we have inside SIM ejector tool. So this is the type C to 3.5 mm adapter. Nice of them to include that. Some paperwork and we get a soft TPU case. Now, this is a very flimsy and cheap case to provide with such a flagship and premium product so I wish this was a hard case or a silicone case with a matte finish but yeah at least it provides some protection and it's got a raised lip here to protect that camera module and we have our phone here so first I'm just gonna keep that to the side and see what else we have in the box Okay, so here we have our 55 watt fast charger. As you can see 55 watt and we have our USB cable. And here we have the phone itself, the Mi 11 Ultra. That <laughs> camera module is huge. And I, I, I don't know about any of you guys and what your opinions are, but Frankly, I love huge, imposing, bold camera modules like this. Okay, I'm not the type of guy who keeps complaining about stupid things like the looks. I mean, if you're getting such great optics, such a great camera, and if it's something that stands out, so I don't see what the problem is having a great, big camera module. We have speakers by Harman Kardon, noise cancelling microphone, your IR blaster. At the bottom, we have another speaker, noise cancelling microphone, USB-C port, and the SIM port as well. On the side, we have the volume rocker and the power button, and nothing on the left side. So yeah, okay. Let's take this off. This feels so hefty in the hand. It's insane. I mean, this is a big phone and it comes with a pre-installed screen protector as you can see. So I'm going to keep that obviously, not going to remove that. So let us power this on now. But the haptics are good. Not bad at all. 5G. Very nice. We have no 5G in our country yet.
so now I've been using the Mi 11 Ultra for a few hours now. I got it in the morning and now it's late in the evening and uh, I have my initial thoughts. Now they are mostly good. First of all, this screen is beautiful. It's super sharp, gets very bright, no problem with outdoor visibility. And with 120 Hertz, everything feels very, very fluid. I mean, absolutely no hiccups there. So that's been good. Now, um, the fingerprint scanner, uh, in-screen fingerprint scanner is also good uh, for the most part, but it is not as consistent as I would want it to be. It's definitely a, a real advantage to have right now in the age of wearing masks, but uh, it's not always as snappy and as responsive as I would want it to be. So there are a few uh, hit and miss uh, incidents that happen, but for the most part, it's okay. And face unlock is much faster, although not as secure as face ID, obviously, but it is something which you can also opt for. Now, call quality has also been very good. There have been no problems at all. So it also works with uh, Geo Wi-Fi calling, although I've been facing um, problems with uh, my voice being clearly audible to the other end whenever I'm using the Wi-Fi calling feature. And this is not just for this phone. It's also happened when I was using my iPhone 11 Pro Max. So I would suggest just keeping it to uh, VO LTE and not using uh, Wi-Fi calling. So, I mean, that's just my experience. So that's why I'm saying that. In terms of photo quality, the initial ones I've taken, I'll try to show you a few shots right now of what I've taken throughout the day. Now the camera is mighty, mighty impressive. And it's one of the main reasons why obviously I at least have invested in this phone because I'm a camera enthusiast and I really, I don't mind this bump. I actually love it. I love how imposing and bold this looks. And I simply love this design. So camera quality for the most part has been really, really nice. Now, because as of now, it still houses one of the biggest sensors in a smartphone. So there is that problem, which most reviewers have said that your plane of focus is very, very slim. It's like, it's, it's like a slice of um, the, the, the space in front of you. So the fall off or the blur is very quick. So for the most part, you'll get tack sharp uh, focus, but sometimes because you're used to seeing smaller uh, sensors on phones, so thus they are much more sharp, like most of the picture is really sharp, especially if you see for iPhones and the likes, this will seem like it missed focus, but actually it hasn't. It's definitely got focus, but the plane of focus is really, really slim. So it might give you that illusion, but a photographer who is used to taking photos using a DSLR, uh, such as myself, I would know the value of having this amazing hardware because for someone who's serious about photography, you don't always want a photo that is Instagram ready. For us, we want to make it Instagram ready after taking the photo. So I at least like making my own tweaks to the photo and then uploading it you know, and not have it absolutely ready because there is always so much uh, shadow or highlight that you can reduce or increase post which the photo starts to get really hampered. So I'd rather have much more detail, which I can, uh, you know, tweak to my taste and then upload. That's just me probably, but um, that's something I really like. Now taking photos using the telephoto mode, I have seen that it does use uh, skin smoothening and the likes, which I'm not a fan of. So hopefully with more software updates, we'll get more realistic view. And uh, this is not me having turned on any sort of uh, beauty filter or anything. Everything was off. But I think by default, it does have a bit of skin smoothening. So that is something I'd want to see it uh, improve. Phone is heavy and yes, it's a bit top heavy, but as many have said that your finger very naturally will rest just below this huge camera bump here. That really helps uh, in, you know, keeping the phone set in your hand so it won't slide off. So it'll kind of rest just over there, very naturally. So I don't mind that and it doesn't hurt my fingers as well. I've kept this case on uh, because, I mean, it provides some protection at least and I take that because this is an expensive phone and I wouldn't want to drop it, especially if this camera module is so exposed that if I get a crack here, I mean, the whole experience will be ruined. So I just want to be careful. 
Setting up stuff has been really easy and seamless. Most of us underestimate how useful it is to have your IR blaster because once again, I can very easily uh, control the AC and TV in my room from my bed or my sofa, wherever I am. And even if I lose my remote, it's not a problem. So the IR blaster is a welcome change. Uh, the headphone jack definitely would have been a very, very uh, good addition to this. But well, it's not there and they at least give you an adapter, USB-C to 3.5 mm and that's good. Now, audio quality through these two Harman Kardon tuned speakers has been very impressive as well. They sound very rich. I haven't done an in-depth test of it. I will do that probably in a future video. But for initial impressions, I must say that it sounds rich and has got a lot of detail and has got a slight um, bit of bass, which is kind of strange. You would, I mean, it's not obviously a Bluetooth speaker level bass, but it does have that, which I was not used to. And this is me coming from 11, iPhone 11 Pro Max. So yeah, this sounds definitely better. And the haptics have also been really, really good. So while typing, uh, it's been a good experience. Maybe not as good as an iPhone, but it's really getting there. It's really close. So I'm happy with that as well. When I took a photo using portrait mode, and then I went to gallery and I wanted to adjust the aperture, like the blur effect uh, in gallery. So after adjusting the blur, and then when I went to save it, it saved the photo as a green screen. I mean, it was, it was just green. So I'm sure that is a glitch, that is a bug, which hopefully with, as soon as we get the new and latest updates from Xiaomi, for me UI, that will be solved, but that did happen. So minor glitch there. Apart from that, um, no other glitches uh, as such till now. And it's been really, really smooth and I'm really enjoying it. Now, battery life has been, well, it's a mixed feeling for me because I, as soon as I got it, I turned it to 120 Hertz. And obviously, I mean, there's no point keeping this to 60 with such a beautiful screen. But battery life does fall quite fast, I would say. Uh, I did charge it to 100% um, with the included 55 watt charger and that was that charged quite fast. So the battery does drain. And whenever I use the camera or I was using Google Chrome, uh, the phone would heat up at times. Not really as uncomfortable where I had to put it down but it does heat up. So hopefully again, although we know that the Snapdragon 888 does have heating issues, hopefully with the latest updates, they can address that and can reduce that uh, as much as possible. But yeah, all in all, I'm super happy with this and I am definitely going to post maybe a more detailed review of this, of the camera. So you guys let me know what you wanna know. Just don't ask me for any gaming review because I'm not a gamer and I'm absolutely not into gaming. So I don't want to install any game on this phone. But anything else you want to know about the Mi 11 Ultra, because finally this is something I've bought. It's not a review unit. So anything I'm going to tell you is going to be unbiased and it's going to be nothing but the truth. So if there's anything you guys want to know about the Mi 11 Ultra, do let me know in the comments below what you want to know, what particular review you want to see if it's the camera or a sound test or maybe both of those do let me know so guys that's been my unboxing and first impressions of the xiaomi mi 11 ultra i hope you've enjoyed this video if you found this helpful definitely smash that like button and subscribe to prcast 9 if you haven't already and as always i'll catch you very soon in the next one cheers